Hello everyone, Ricardo Bancone here and in this video I'm going to try the beta version of the Blender 2.8 so let's open Blender great let's make sure I load the factory settings to see how Blender really looks like Blender 2.8 beta really looks like when you open up for the first time because uh, I it probably it is probably reading the startup settings from my uh, older installation. So the first thing I notice here is that the default now is the left click select, which I have to get used to this because I. I was using uh, right-click select. Uh, I personally think this is a great idea for the newcomers uh, in Blender. Look at this, great. And the right-click, let's see what it does. It opens up a context menu for the selected object. This is nice. I can copy, paste, duplicate, for example, the light. Let's delete it. X still deletes it. And let's go to edit mode. No Pi menu unless I click Control Tab, which opens up my Pi menu for uh, for the modes. Let's go into edit mode. And now the to switch from vertex, edge, or face mode, I have to press 1, 2, and 3 on the keyboard, uh, which is a good idea in my opinion, because uh, shift tab was, or, or control tab, I don't, I don't even remember, I just used to press that with my muscle memory, but uh, since I'm, I started using the nightly builds of Blender 2.8, I very quickly get got used to 1, 2 and 3 to select uh, to select the, the different components. So vertices, edges, oh I'm still used to right click select edges and faces. Okay, the, most of the shortcuts are the same. The space bar is playing now, which is kind of nice, I think, because most of editing softwares uh, use space bar to play the footage, the animation, or whatever. Uh, a strange thing that I'm noticing here that to scroll the cursor on the timeline, I have to use the right click since the left click is reserved for selection which is a little bit cumbersome in my opinion I'm not sure this is a good idea anyway uh, I think the left click selection by default is a great idea for the newcomers so let's just activate uh, I don't like the face selection not having the uh, center point here so I'm going to overlays in the new window here and I'm searching for mesh edit mode center so I can I can now see the center uh, points of the faces uh, and I think with these points uh, it's easier to uh, to see at a glance if I'm in uh, edge mode vertex mode or face mode so uh, let's try to build something from scratch my frame rate is a little bit oh no it's not a frame rate it's the snapping option from uh, yeah that's why the snapping option the snapping is on because I I pressed shift tab which is the, the shortcut for uh, snap on and off so uh, let's just try to build some random uh, random model okay uh, for the control click extrusion since the left click is the selection if I use this the, the left click the left click for selection I have to control right click to do to perform this extrusion action. I don't know how it's called, but as you can see, if I um, control click right click, I extrude in the on the cursor, extrude on cursor. Maybe it's called like that. Let's go to edge mode. Let's select uh, a loop, 
Another nice thing, which is, I believe, like Maya, if you double click select on a, a component, it automatically selects the loop, which is very handy, very quick. Look at this. I double click and I select the, the loop. So I'm, uh, this is a very handy feature to have. Let's just test Alt S is moving the components along the normal so something like it's I think it's called something like shrink or flatten or something like that anyway it's still there the shortcuts uh, mo most of the shortcuts are the same and uh, speaking about the spacebar since it's reserved to play the animation as you can see uh, to open up the search bar you have to press F3 uh, which is not a big deal in my opinion and anyway if you go to the preferences they are now called preferences and they are in edit instead of uh, under the file menu uh, which makes sense uh, you can still I think interface editing input you can still uh, set your preferences if you want to select with left or right click and you can choose if uh, if you want to uh, use the spacebar to play, uh, to select the tools, which are these tools here, and if you want to search, let's. Uh, I, I think I prefer the play, uh, the play um, action to on on the spacebar. So I will leave it at, as it is. Okay, save preferences. If even if I didn't change anything. Uh, let's explore a little bit the viewport now and the, the tools also as well. As you can see, the you have the spacebar. There's this concept of active tool, which is the tool that you uh, use when. Well, this is a nice question. Uh, how do I use the tool now that I have the left click as a default? Uh, for selection let's try it I, I think I never tried that so let's um, choose extrude region which by the way I can simply do that uh, by selecting and simply pressing E like the blender 2.79 uh, version it's okay I can still extrude with the shortcut if I want but if I want to use the active tool I just select the active tool for extrude region which is is this one and I I can see the gizmo appearing on the selected component for for example let's try to let's select this one I can now hit this plus to extrude okay I simply use the left click to both select and perform the action on the active tool so if I click on the plus, I extrude along the normal. If I click on the arrow, I just move the extruded face like this option here. This is the same. And by the way, this I think it's a popover. It's called a popover or pop-up. I don't remember. Anyway, this little window here allows me to um, tweak the settings of the uh, performant action. In this case, uh, it's the extrusion. So doing this one, this thing here, moving the arrow, uh, using the gizmo, or adjusting the number here is basically the same thing. I can uh, I can do a lot of things from this menu, or simply more intuitively, uh, maybe I think, uh, using the gizmo. So I scale with S. I just move, extrude freely using this. Uh, Okay, with the circle I can just move freely in the space. With this, I can't see the arrow anymore. Why not? I don't know why anyway. And I am going on with this extrusion extrusion tool. Let's switch the tool. Let's try the bevel tool. I maybe can select this loop with double click. Hmm. Oh, I am in face mode, so I have to switch by pressing 2 on my keyboard on edge mode. And let's just double click this thing here. 
this uh, edge to select the edge loop and let's perform the bell just click and drag and it works and now I have all the options that I want to uh, tweak my uh, bevel here I, let's say I want a couple of um, cuts segments maybe three this is nice I can tweak the profile shape and the amount is just the radius of the the bevel. Anyway, even if I have um, the active tool bevel, I just I can just select and control B and just bevel and uh, like the uh, Blender 2.79. It's okay. I can just control B, drag, scroll the wheel of the mouse and add or decrease the the number of cuts. As you can see. It's just uh, the same as the old Blender, but you have the tools here, which I think it's a great, uh, it's a great um, interface feature for uh, the Blender beginners because you just, you just see the bar, you select your tool, for example, the knife, and with the left click, start using the tool, as you can see. You just I'm now using the knife because I selected on the active toolbar and it just works like like a shark let's hit enter to finalize and just and I can just keep using it I don't have to press K uh, to to use the knife again because it's already selected this is already my active tool so I can simply click click enter to finalize it so and then I, now I can just maybe let's see if I want to select instead of using instead of using the knife let's see what hap what happens hmm I don't like it I have now to go back to my well it's not that I'm not liking it it makes sense actually because now I have to go back to my selection tool now I have the box select here and I can select the edge or I can simply have the click select and my active tool now is simply the select with left click now I select this one and I just maybe scale with S but if I'm a beginner and, and I don't know that S is for scaling I can simply select my scale tool and use it maybe I go here and I select my move tool and use it or I have the transform tool which includes uh, all the transformations in just one gizmo here I can uh, I can scale it I'm sorry it's a little bit hard to click the right spot here I can scale on this axis scale uh, scale on uh, or maybe rotate it on the y-axis or just transform uh, the component on another axis this is okay I I don't know if I if I will ever use this because I'm so used to uh, just hitting G to to move things around R to rotate S for scale all the shortcuts are are there um, nothing is really has really changed that much if you use for example Control R and now uh, with Control R I'm using a loop cut. Uh, and slide tool here which is now uh, here as well look at as you can see it's active and just by hovering the mouse on the mesh I just get my preview uh, on the mesh so I already know just by um, by hovering the mouse where the cut will be for example let's have a loop cut add a loop cut here click now I just added a cut uh, let's see what what happens if I just if I drag if I drag I'm moving this thing around and let's see if I tweak number of cuts I can I can increase as long as I uh, uh, as I I didn't finalize finalize the action 
I can still tweak the action here, which is great. Let's go back to my selection mode, selection tool, and oh, damn, I mean, I'm, I'm still um, used to the right click, but I probably switch back to the left click selection because of course every software uses, uses uh, right click, sorry, left click to select. And since it will be the default, chances are that uh, new users of Blender will use the left click select, uh, in my opinion, which is nice. It's a little bit more standard. Now let's see what else, what else. Um, and there is this nice poly build tool, uh, which is probably better, to, better uh, to try it uh, with a retopo workflow. Let's just uh, add some subsurf modifier here. That's F3, search bar, shade, smooth. And by the way, uh, with right click, I have the smooth shading and flat shading option just here. This is great. I really like the object context menu. I can just do this. Oh, and if I, if I click outside of the mesh, I just deselect. Now, I, I deselected it by double tapping A, but I can, uh, I can just click outside of the mesh in the void space in the canvas, let's in the viewport, to, to just deselect anything, which is pretty nice, pretty standard. So uh, let's go on, on this uh, strange mesh here. Let's go to edit mode, hitting tab, and let's go to face mode and just try to extrude. I want to use the beginners, the beginner tools here. Uh, let's let's call it beginner tools because I want to test them. Let's try extrude region, extrude, extrude. I don't know why I I don't have the the arrow to extrude along normal. Even if I have selected normal, oh this is nice. Look at this. If I select. And by the way, on the top bar here, I have the option for, for the active tool. For example, now I'm using the extrusion and I can switch between normal mode. So I'm extruding along the normal. Okay, here is the arrow, arrow. And I just move it and tweak the extrusion. And with plus, I add another extrusion. Now let's just uh, use the scale tool to just... What am I doing here? I don't know. Mm. How do I scale uniformly? I don't know anyway, just hit S for scaling and tweak this thing. Let's go to normal grade and I can scale it along X. I like it, okay, this is, this is okay. Sorry for the long silences, but I'm experimenting here. I'm just exploring the tools. Pretty cool. I like it. And let's let's try to use now the that that new tool. Okay. And by the way, now I want to select the cursor, which is here now, because if I have this selection, if I uh, if I left click, I just I'm just deselecting. I'm not uh, placing the cursor anyway, anywhere. Sorry, but if I right-click, I have the object context menu. If I want to place the cursor, I, I actually have to select the cursor tool and just drag, and just click actually, not drag, the cursor around. Mm, and I like it because I I use the cursor, but I don't think it's so um, I don't use it that often, and I don't think that the cursor should be so um, like the active tool by default on the left click. So I like I like that the cursor have to be selected, and of course you can hide the cursor if you don't want it 
uh, you just go to overlays which are basically the settings for everything that you have uh, on a separate layer I think on the viewport for example the selection act to outline all these lines for the object the cursor the grid uh, all this stuff is considered an overlay in fact if I de 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 deactivate uh, the overlays display I just see my meshes that's it so let's bring back the overlays and as you can see you can simply uh, hide the cursor if you don't want it just hide it but now I need it because I want to add another object with shift A I want uh, to add a plane to try uh, this tool here poly build um, let's activate the snapping on the face great project onto self I don't want it I want to project individual elements and let's go to vertex mode let's uh, with this button here I show whole scene transparent so I can see basically the uh, even the vertices that are occluded by the mesh so everything is transparent here now I just select it grab and snap it on the surface because I want to do something that could be considered a retopology action so mm, I don't know if there is any way to have a better visualization when you retopo as you can see here my new geometry here for some reason well of course I don't see it because it's hidden by the smooth surface here and I wonder if is if there is a better way to just have this thing on top of this but I'm not talking about this option which should be here by the way the new icons are cool I like it but the lack of color is a little bit for me it's kind of hard to find what I'm looking for because the colors uh, really help me to find uh, I even remember what the, what the hell I was looking for oh yeah um, this is the object uh, panel I don't remember how the it's called uh, let's see the viewport display there is this option in front which always shows this object in front of of others even if it's occluded but I don't really want this thing to happen because if I select this and I start extruding extruding because let's pretend I want to retopologize this mesh I still see back faces and I don't want that I want it to be on fr in front of this mesh when it's on top but I don't want to see these faces which are actually occluded I wonder if there is a way to to obtain that anyway let's let's uh, let's try this this one okay I have this um, this tool let's see what it does when I when I click on an edge okay I don't like it let's see what it does when I click on a vertex I don't like it let's see what happens if I if I select vertex and I extrude hmm extrude extrude let's select these vertices And when I go back uh, to poly build and I do that this is nice I can quickly build polygons just by dragging the corner here which is pretty cool anyway if I have this tool active and I have the left click select um, option I mean if I in my settings have the left click there is no way I believe I don't know but probably there's no way to if I want to just for example extrude this I have to go here go to select select mode 
select the vertices and then extrude them. I cannot simply select an extrude because there's no way to, I think, to select anything while this tool is, uh, is active. Because if I right click, I just get this context menu. If I left click, I just start using my poly build tool. So basically, I have to go back here. For example, select these components, extrude. Okay, and just select these. Let's fill with F. Everything is working fine here. Hmm. I think that probably. I don't know. I have to think about that. Probably there are pros and cons uh, with uh, using the left click select. Anyway, this tool is very promising. Maybe it needs it needs to be a little bit uh, needs to be refined, maybe, or probably I have to figure out how it works uh, with all uh, with its full fun functionality. But anyway. I kind of like how you can quickly retopo your models using, uh, let's say, classical method. As you can see here, you can just select and extrude using the shortcuts and just build your model. But if you want to quickly create topology just like this, it's pretty cool. very quick nice so um, I think I will delete this object let's have a look at the viewport this is the solid mode the old solid mode now it's called oh it's called solid for some reason um, I thought I thought I thought it was called workbench maybe it's actually okay I have to go to Hmm, interesting. If, if I have the box select, I can't. Uh, if I right click, okay, that's that makes sense. Not really, actually, but uh, if I had the box select active tool, uh, which I use by left click and drag, I have the box select. If I want the lasso uh, selection, I have to control left click or uh, right click sorry but if I have the simple select mm, I don't like this I have to I have to use the right click to select I don't know it's a little bit maybe inconsistent I don't know anyway let's keep going I was exploring the viewport this is the solid mode and I have the wireframe mode here which looks pretty nice I can I can have the wireframe on shaded here just uh, if I tweak the overlays as you can see I don't see all the the edges because I have to move this slider to see how much of the wireframe I want to I want to see I generally I probably I will probably stay with this if I want to see the wireframe um, there is another really useful feature which is the face orientation uh, which shows the faces in blue with a blue overlay if they are uh, the normals uh, are facing the camera but let's add another object here um, so the cube if I go in edit mode and face mode let's select this face and uh, delete it the back faces are highlighted in red so it's a very handy overlay to quickly spot uh, wrong normals. See, if I just flip 
with normal spy mistake with this overlay on I can quickly spot the, the problem and just and just fix it and by the way I think the uh, conform normal uh, the how is it called um, the make normal consistent now is shift N and, uh, and I think it it was control N before I really can't remember uh, the shortcuts in words I mean I remember how to perform an action without even thinking about that but if I have to tell what the shortcut is I'm not really able to to tell it I just remember it it's something like muscle memory I guess anyway shift n will flip with will make the normal the normals consistent this this is very very nice so let's go into another mode let's actually uh, turn off the wireframe I have the back face calling as well as you can see and let's also uh, turn the face orientation off and now I have this uh, my viewport in solid mode back and then there is the look depth mode which basically uses I think the EV render but it uses a custom matcap which uh, sorry not mat mat matcap I mean uh, a custom HDR environment which is which you can change here and also if you want it overrides the lighting all the lights you're not using uh, the light here as you can see if I move it it's not affecting unless I click here use scene lights as well at this point I'm using I think the light and also this HDR as you can see it it's different now or I can even choose to use the scene world and basically it I think it becomes just the EV rendered viewport so just deactivate the default is this one so I can just see my model un under different uh, lighting environments which, which is cool in my opinion let's select it let's uh, change the material I have my principal BSDF here let's give it a little bit of color so the material is displayed correctly it's just the environment that is being overridden okay cool let's delete this guy and then there is of course the rendered mode which depends on the render engine that you choose under the render settings the, re the render settings are now split into two panels here which which are the render settings and the render output which I think it makes sense but maybe the settings are, are scattered uh, through these two menus I don't know if I like it it makes sense but I don't know if it's really useful anyway uh, you choose your render engine here and that's what what uh, what the render the render engine which is used in the viewport when you choose rendered mode so if I switch to cycles now it's rendering with cycles if I go back to EV, it's rendering, of course, with EV. So um, let's explore EV in the viewport, which is amazing. It's an amazing rendering render engine. It's real time. It's fast, but uh, for a lot of cases, you can even use it for uh, the final render. It depends on or on what you're doing but it's really fast and pretty high quality let's change the material here uh, something that I really like is the subsurface scattering in real time which you have to activate on 
two in in two places in Blender. The first one is uh, in the single material. For this material, I want the subsurface translucency, or maybe not. This is just this. Yes, probably I have to activate this. And then I go to the render setting panel and I activate subsurface scattering here. And of course I have to increase the subsurface value, change the subsurface color to maybe let's have a more orange uh, color for the subsurface scattering and a maybe a green color for the surface. Just let's tweak the value here. Here I'm mixing between the solid green base color and the subsurface scattering color. So if I want if I want to go an average value of 0.8 maybe. 0.8 sorry. Okay, I like it. And then I can tweak the radius which uh, by the way uses the shadow map I think. So if I change the softness of the shadow I can see that the the subsurface scattering look changes. Okay, I like it. Let's decrease the environment light just a little bit to have more contrast. 0 0.2 maybe, it's almost pitch black, so I can better see the subsurface scattering here, which is very nice. And Let's add some. Uh, let's uh, shift. Oh, this is cool. When I shift S to snap uh, things around, I get this nice um, uh, pie menu, uh, which I like it. Yes, I like the the pie menu for this uh, kind of operation. Let's snap the cursor to word the region. Now it's not called. Um, center uh, anymore it's called world region which makes totally sense because you snap to the world region uh, the word center is a little bit too bug I don't even know what why uh, originally that word was used to indicate the world region anyway this is cool and let's add some plane just using the shortcuts to model to quickly model this thing let's go to uh, edge mode and just extrude along Z well and now control B to bevel and I'm using the mouse wheel to add cuts here and then just right click hmm okay in in edit mode the mesh context menu of course is different and I have some quick operations that I can do and I think it's uh, it's dependent by it's probably the same action that was performed with the W key maybe let's go to face model and see what what it does yep it's different if I go in vertex mode I select and I uh, right click I have remove doubles okay it's basically the W menu on the left click which totally makes sense in my opinion so let's go back to object mode right click and smooth shading great let's add the materials for this background here let's uh, new material principal BSDF by default is assigned I don't want it to be reflective so I turn the specular off I want it to be very bright gray now let's bring back some ambient lighting uh, to, I don't know, maybe 0.8, which is nice. Okay, let's now um, also maybe, I have to select, mm, this, is, this is interesting, if I have, of course, the cursor, the move cursor to to be my active tool I cannot select anything I, I think the right click opens the context menu 
the left click just places the cursor and I have to go back to select tool to start selecting things around okay maybe it makes sense let's change some render settings here I want some ambient occlusion of course ambient occlusion is nice it's always nice in EV it gives some more detail as you can see I just increased the radius here look at this okay I like it I, I, I leave the precision as is cool and then maybe I can add some um, let's see hmm screen space reflections screen screen space reflection are great uh, I don't see much of a difference because I don't have any very reflective object this is reflective but I think there is a limit yep uh, max roughness 0.5 do not retrace reflection for roughness above this value and this object has a specular a roughness just uh, of 0.5 so probably no reflections are performed so let's just bring this thing to 0.2 and probably I can I just start seeing screen space reflection here I can see the plane reflected here uh, just to better see that I just turn it off and I turn it back on and I can see the difference okay screen space reflection are nice um, let's add some uh, some other effects maybe I want to convert this this light to an area light let's tweak the size it's a rectangle which is cool but as, as you can see in EV by default the shadows are pretty crisp even if I have an area an area lamp here so I have to fix this first of all I go to render settings here and I go under the shadows and I use soft shadows look how nice they look of course when I rotate it when I, when I rotate the view it's not updating maybe for performance reason but as as soon as I release the the center mouse button it starts to recalculate the soft shadow if I increase the samples and actually I don't know where the settings for the soft shadows quality are probably under the light settings let's see shadows clip start clip end okay I can tweak the clip start and then maybe I want it to be a little bit longer and for the shadows hmm, let's tweak the softness I don't know if if it's affected if it's even affecting the the multiple samples here I think it's it's not affecting it I had to explore these settings to to better tweak the soften anyway the softness anyway it's looking it's already looking pretty cool and let's add also the contact shadows that generally help to, to sell the effect but I'm not seeing any effect here let's add some other object to let's add some another cube maybe cool now let's go to edit mode and just uh, starting to editing to edit this thing hmm. this, the, the soft shadow uh, is actually uh, distracting me so I'm going to switch to look dev which still give me a nice preview but I don't see any shadows so I can work a little bit better I 
I don't know what, what, what I'm doing, but let's just let's just try Shift E. No, sorry, I I mean Control E or no, it's Alt E. Extrude individual faces. That's what I want to do. Uh, let's change the individual origins here so I can scale these guys individually. Let's add some cuts here. So let's double click to select the edge loop. Very handy. I like this feature and I just fix the shape like this. I don't know why, but let's go on. Let's extrude, extrude. Let's create some funky shapes here and of course let's add a subdivision surface and let's go I'm already in object mode so right click smooth shading great let's add a different material uh, with maybe a color like this I don't like this orange anymore I'm, let's go to back to select tool Maybe green, yep, or maybe yellow subsurface scattering with green, very saturated green diffuse. Let's, okay, I like it. Let's go a little bit more rough, cool, maybe 2.4. I like it. Now let's select this guy and let's give it uh, maybe. Yep, I like this color. Subsurface scattering as well here. Subsurface scattering, okay, zero point maybe four. I leave the radius here so the red is a little bit more scattered. And did I subsurface translucency? And also, let's double check the subsurface scattering. Separate albedo. It's uh, it it helps to keep the texture details if you have any. Okay, I don't know what these things are, but they look interesting. Maybe there are some funky fluids floating in the air. Okay, let's let's go modeling something. I'm pressing T by mistake and I'm hiding and showing the toolbar. Oh, and, and something I noticed is that if I go to uh, solid mode and I try to, for example, no, it works. I don't know why it's working now, but before I didn't get the smooth preview in edit mode. I don't know why. Pretty cool. Oh, and there is something else that I want to explore, which are the shading option for um, the the solid mode. Uh, of course, you have a lot of options here. You can tweak your lighting. You can have it flat. You can disable or enable the outlines. Then you can use random colors, single color, and you have also a very cool feature here, which is the cavity shading. And of course, you, you have two types of cavity shading, shading, which are world space and screen space. This is the world space. You can tweak the... I don't like to... 
to have the ridge value too high because it tends to you know show the the, the edges the subdivisions of the mesh so I don't really like that I prefer to uh, don't use the ridge at all and just push the valley value up to have some detail here especially if I'm looking at flat mode and then of course I can tweak the samples or the distance and it's cool because I can use the world um, the world cavity to have some low resolution detail highlights and then I can combine it using the screen space cavity shader or both so I can combine them so I have the, the screen space settings so I can still use the ridge highlighting maybe I can use a little bit of a darker color here or random colors as well let's let's create some oh now as you can see now I don't see the preview maybe it depends maybe it's the screen space the cavity shader no look now that I select this thing and I go to edit mode suddenly I don't see the smoothing preview single color no material no flat studio matcap I don't know why now it's not visible anymore and now it's visible what's the problem maybe it's a bug I don't know I don't know what's going on maybe let's the cavity is still working I think I found some kind of bug that sometimes doesn't show the subsurf modifier preview in edit mode I don't know what was the, the problem so let's add some some detail let's control B S maybe like this Shift, double click. Oh, this is so handy, really. This is one of my fe favorite uh, features in Blender 2.8. The double click to select loops, just like in Maya. Okay, screen space. I will use the screen space valley to highlight the tiny contact shadows here, which is nice. Let's add another cut here. Control. Oh. Whew. Okay. S or Alt S. No. Alt S. What's doing? What's going on here? I don't know. Uh, let's add a medium point. Medium point. Okay. Alt S is working again. Now let's add a loop cut here. Shift double click. Alt S. Okay. Great. So pretty cool. Very nice, let's go back to render mode and they look like maybe olives cool let's disable the overlays just see what's rendered I really like it then there is, uh, let's go, let's see the outliner now. The outliner is a great, has uh, some great uh, updates. Of course, you have the collection. No more uh, view layers. There are no more those little tiny boxes, buttons. I don't know. I don't remember how they call that, them, but now you have collections which are very handy you just create this is the scene collection it's basically the default 
uh, collection um, that I think every collection, every new created object or every new created uh, collection just belongs by the scene, uh, to the scene collection by default and then you can create, this is the default collection that you have, you can rename it if you want, you can uh, name it objects for example now you can create a new collection just by right clicking here I uh, create a new collection and I call it maybe render because I want to put every rendering related object here like my lights and my camera let's select them the camera and my light and then I just want to move these object into the render uh, collection and the shortcut of course is just the same as the old blender so M and then I have this menu that allows me to choose where to move my object in this case I want to move them into render maybe I want to, I want to create another collection for my background objects in this case I just have this background object so I can do like this I just select back my background I move the background to another collection and I can create a new collection and just move my object there but I of course I have to name it and I will rename it uh, BG that stands for background so I, as you can see here in my um, in the outliner I can see there is the objects collection which of course have the green blob and the pink blob I'm not sure this is probably not pink this is a color that I call fuchsia but I don't know if in English uh, I don't know if this word even exists in English. Anyway, uh, I have my objects collection, I have my render collection, I have my background collection, um, and then I can just hide it. Uh, just like I did with the little boxes, layers uh, in the old Blender. But now you can have as many collections as you want. You can name them. It's, I think it's a big improvement, really. And of course, I'm, I have to wrap my head around of what's the difference between just hiding object and disabling. Uh, I think that if you hide them, you, if you just hide them and just then click. I don't really know what's the difference. With H, you hide the object. Alt H, you just sorry. Alt H, you just show them back. And with these, you disable. But I, I have to to search into the documentation. What's what's really the difference between the two? Of course, these things is are meant to disable the object for rendering just like the the old blender and a cool thing are the render layers which are called view layers you can find them here on the top bar you have the, your scenes just like the blender 2.79 and then you have the view layer which I don't know if maybe they are called calling view layer but this is actually a render layer I'm I'm not really sure anyway I just test um, these uh, in in production and they work pretty cool so you can basically have let's say this is my view layer okay this is just the layer that I use to work on my object I want everything to be visible in it so I can of course create a new render layer let's call it objects or maybe pink ob objects let's maybe create another pink object here let's create um, maybe 
a cube. Let's control L, uh, copy the material, and just control smooth shading. Hmm, pretty handy. I'm 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 getting used to the some of the new shortcuts shortcuts and I like them. So let's create another funky object here. Okay, maybe this could be a quick character. Ah, come on. Control click doesn't work anymore because I have the no, I don't want I don't know why. Let's go. Control click. Hmm. Interesting. If I try to Oh no, it's control right click. Yep, yeah, it's control right click. Okay, it's working actually. I just need to get used to Actually, I don't. I don't know if I want to get used to left click. I, I, there's a the possibility that I go back to uh, to right click. Mm. Huh. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's say that I want the a layer with let's say maybe pink and pink green objects I changed my mind I want a layer with the pink and green object and I want to I want in this layer just to have just these object uh, to be rendered so I just disable exclude from this render layer these other two collect no the background collection okay so I just right click view layer set exclude hmm that's strange because I remember that here I also had some settings to set cut out sorry set hold out and other options for uh, combining the layers. Now I can only see the exclude. Anyway, as you can see, with my pink green object, I just have my my objects and my. Okay, I have to move this cube to the object as well. Okay, my objects and my render. If I disable this one as well, I will not see my. Uh, the object hit by lights so set exclude as you can see now in these layers I just see the objects but I don't see the lights which are in rendered collection and I don't see the background but I don't want that so I want to set this collection back to I want to clear exclude I want to see it in my render layer and then what I want to do is I want to create I want to create a new um, a new render layer. So just click here. It calls it calls it a view layer. I want it to be a background layer. Okay, background layer maybe just to make the distinction between the render layer and the collection which, has, which are two separate concepts mm. and sorry okay and now I just disable my object collection just by pressing maybe E on the keyboard it is the shortcut to disable it so my background layer I just have my lights and my background in my pink green object layer I just have my objects and let's say I, I want a view layer that I use as a workbench just to have everything visible in it so 
So let's create a new one. And I'll call it just work layer. Okay, now everything is visible. If I want to see everything, I have my work layer. If I want to render, and I also can go to render layers here and just uncheck this for rendering. I don't want to use it for rendering. I just want this one and this one to be used for rendering. So in fact, if I just hit F12 to render, a new windows pops up. I should have um, I should have placed the camera before hitting render. So let's close it and let's place the camera. Let's select the camera. Hit zero on the numpad to look through the camera. Let's lock the camera to view here. And let's move it. Let's go back to my work layer so I can see what I'm doing. Just place my camera here. Cool. Let's go back. Maybe actually I can just stay on this layer because I tagged it. I unchecked this uh, this layer for rendering. Let's just edit this guy here. S um, Y. Cool. Okay. Let's just render again. The window pops on the other screen every time. I don't know why. Okay, now I have a couple of render layers here. Right, the background layer is here, and the pink and green objects here, but I have no shadows. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know how to change the settings because I think it's changed. Maybe it's just for, let's see, maybe it's just for cycles. Let's switch to cycles now. Let's uh, go to, what do I do? View layer. Here it is. It's, it's just working with cycles. W what I was talking about uh, are these, um, these uh, settings here. Set holdout, set indirect only, set exclude. Uh, these are settings to to set up your render uh, layers workflow, but as you can see, they just work with uh, with cycles. So if I go to render mode, I will, I have my work layer. Now I use pink green object. I just have the the objects here rendered in cycles, of course, and then I have the background layer. But still no shadows because I disabled them. How do I? Okay, maybe I have to enable them. So set maybe clear exclude. So I see the shadows, but probably I don't want the. I don't want them to be rendered. How do I get shadows on the back the background layer? Hmm. I have to investigate that. Let me think about that. If I just if I just disable, let's see what, what it does. If I render it, okay, let's hit F12. I hope it doesn't take, oh no, it's too long to render. Let's just tweak the samples here. Just, just use one sample just to debug this thing. Let's light paths, just one or maybe two bounces. Uh, let's and let's uh, with output and just tweak the maybe 25 percent 25 percent let's say 
have 12 and let's see what's what is rendering okay I'll render layer one background layer no it rendered it okay I have to re-render okay In the background layer what's this Strange things are happening. Background layer, pink, green objects, no. Background layer, hmm. It's strange, I don't know how to. View layer, indirect only, maybe? Let's try it. Okay background layer this is set to indirect only there is nothing that tells me visually that this is set to indirect only but let's try okay that's what I was looking at uh, looking for I have the shadows here uh, to to few samples let's just increase them sampling 64 maybe let's have 12 now it's a little bit cleaner Okay, in my background layer, I have this collection set just to indirect only. So this is not primarily visible, but it still casts shadows. Then I have the pink and green objects. And here, I want to, maybe this thing, I want the same thing here. I want the clear exclude. And actually, I want to set indirect only. Let's re-render the scene now. And I have just the objects and just the background. And that's what I wanted. And this is the workflow for the render layers, which is, which I like it. But maybe it needs some visual feedback on the status of the collection uh in the in this particular render layer if i exclude it it's okay i simply see this one grayed out but i have no clue that these uh, this uh, collection is actually set uh indirect only okay unless I go to this sub menu here so I think this is still work in progress but it works so basically if I go to the compositor and by the way there are these workspaces let's try it let's go to compositing and I have the compositing tab here the compositing yes the compositing workspace I mean the compositing editor here let's use nodes and I have this render layer let's create another render layer node here let's duplicate it let's use the background layer now this needs to be down here well now let's combine them color um, alpha over did I set the background to be transparent? No, I didn't, so I have to re-render that. I, I, I forgot to use these options. This option here, I had to it hit F12, so now I have my transparent background. So I can, I have an alpha channel uh, to use it for uh, the compositing here. So this thing goes here. This the image goes here and this is going to the output let's um, let's see the backdrop I need a viewer node of course output viewer I'm sorry I mean viewer great and as you can see I correctly composed the two layers so one thing I'm missing, I don't know if I can't find it or if it's planned to be added as a feature, I hope, I hope that, 
is some kind of uh, override mechanism per layer. For example, if I want a single layer uh, to all with the, for example, if I want to do a clay render of my scene, so I mean every object should have the same white material. I don't want to duplicate the collection and its content uh, and then assign a new material and then render that collection. What would be really handy uh, is some mechanism, some, some way to override the material or any other settings actually. Some way to override the material assignment per render layer. I don't know if it's possible, it's, even if it's planned planned to be added as a as a feature I hope so actually anyway I don't know what to see uh, some other let's go back to my layout let's create a new a new a new file general okay I trashed my scene and now I want to try the sculpting options. Yeah, sculpting workspace. You just go into sculpting, sculpt mode, it changes the view into solid shading, but with the matte cap, I personally prefer this this one for sculpting because it reminds me it reminds me of Matbox, which is a piece of software that I I like. Um, the cavity is on by default in the sculpting mode and then you have all the tools here which is great you have din turbo I want to activate it of course the symmetry lock is here of course you have this new tab which is the tab for the active tool options so as you can see you can tweak your uh, tool settings from here but of course you have the top bar as well if you don't want this thing to be always open you can still use these options here on the top bar to tweak your your tool so the symmetry lock is uh, is on and then the results so I probably want to display the wireframe to see what's happening when I use the top as you can see it works like charm it's tessellating on the fly as I as I use my sculpting uh, my clay strips brush. I'm using the mouse because I don't have my graphics tablet uh, set up on my computer right now. Let's change it in the interval options with relative detail. I want the subdivide collapse maybe. I'm sorry, I want the custom detail. Just pick the, the detail from here, for example, and just use the t this absolute detail all over my model. Smooth is working fine. Everything is working fine. I, I really like it. I like the feel, I like the look. It's pretty cool. You can do a lot of cool stuff with the new blender and something that I really like is the is the fact that uh, it's way more user friendly for beginners really I really like the new design it's it, it's not perfect of course it can improve, but I think it's a huge step step forward for uh, usability for beginners. Cool. I don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe one of those uh, ugly blocks from Super Mario 64. You know, those blue blocks.
cool. It's cool that you can colorize your matcaps just using this single color here. Let's try um, just subdivide the edges and relative detail. Let's see if the pixels, 12 pixels are okay. Let's try to use smooth shading. Cool. You can smooth everything out. I don't know what I'm doing, just messing around with this called tools. Jeez, I need a tablet. Hmm. I'm too lazy to pick that up from my backpack. <laughs> nice. It's funny to sculpt with Blender. This is just a random video. While I'm talking, I don't even know if I if I'll ever uh, publish it. Let's try with the clay strips brush negative. Let's increase the cavity mapping maybe. Both. Okay, cool. So I can better see. Look how cool is the cavity shading. I mean, no, not mapping. Uh, how it helps you to to better see the fine details on your model. It's great. I really like it. Let's increase the strength of this brush so I can quickly uh, sculpting with the mouse is a pain in the ass. Hmm, cool. Time to take my to take my tablet. I just have it right here in my backpack. It's, a, it's an old Wacom bamboo. Does its job. I oh shit. I'm sorry for the for the noise. I just lost my microphone. I'm just trying to set up my tablet. Okay, let's see if it works. Oh no, it's it's set. I have to change my settings. Let's see if I can quickly change that. Uh, anyway, you, you you know you remember this guy from Mario 64? That guy that used to to do that when when it falls down on the ground. Um, where are the Wacom settings? Wacom settings. Okay, the mapping of the pen should be on the other screen. That that's what I'm trying to do now. Okay. Monitor number two. Okay, that's cool. Let's try it. Okay, it's working. Now I'm I'm using my tablet so I can I can use the pressure sensitivity to have more control on my sculpt. It's cool. I really like um, the sculpting in in the 2.8 because you have a lot lot of cool shaders to play with that are very useful for sculpting. 
the toolbar is very handy and you know very very user friendly the performance is cool as well you can you can use your dim topo with lots of polygons my computer is not very it's not very high end but it works cool it's a laptop for what works good for this kind of sculpting it's pretty cool it's kind of relaxing Just going sculpting, sculpting, adapting details. If I with these settings here, if I go closer, the detail size is in pixel, and I just subdivide, not delete. So if I want to have more details somewhere, I just go closer to my model and start adding strokes, and I get these nice creases here. So your detail just depends on how close to your model is uh, you are. Sorry. Look at this. You can add some clay, digital clay here. You can smooth everything out. Let's go into look dev. Let's see how it looks. Oh, it looks ugly because I have no material here. Let's go back to matcap. Let's change the matcap. Let's try another one. Let's try this or, or this. Hmm, this is cool. No, it's too shiny. This is probably the best for this kind of sculpture. Go closer so I can smooth and have more detail. Let's um, with Shift C you can go. Uh, you can change your. You can use your uh, crease. It's. It, I mean. So Shift C is the shortcut for the crease brush. So I'm using Shift to temporarily activate the smooth brush. And then I I use the brush to create the creases, and I I click Control to invert the the brush. So instead of uh, carving in the model, I'm just adding with the crease brush some sharp edges here I'm adding some sharp edges and some sharp creases let's go closer to add some more tessellation with let's see with the wireframe what I'm doing so I go closer and closer just add tessellation therefore I'm adding details maybe I shouldn't I shouldn't add so much detail at this stage but I'm just messing around you know to see how how it, it looks and how it feels when it's called with Blender 2.8 okay add some details here cool let's deactivate the wireframe great so you can do a lot of cool stuff with Blender 
as you can see I, I don't have a, uh, I don't have enough detail here to have a smooth lip so I go closer and I add detail on the fly just defining the lip here This guy is ugly as hell. Let's go back to. I'm sorry, I meant. What am I doing? Layout. Okay. Layout. Workspace. Let's just select this guy. Let's add some material very quickly. Uh, look, Dev. I have this nice blue color I want it to be a little bit more rough rougher I don't know great that's cool very cool so that's my first adventure in blender 2.8 beta I don't know if I ever publish this boring video anyway. If I will do, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching and sorry for my bad English. See you next time.